All right, guys, for those of y'all that follow me on Google+, Plus, this is the train that, uh, that destroyed all those hard starts. And there's my new hard start that I put on there the other day. Uh, we're unhooking the high voltage right now. Now, the compressor does actually still run. But when it starts, it, it sounds very, very weak. I mean, you can tell that even with a hard start, it barely, barely wants to start. We were able to pump the most of the refrigerant back into the condensing unit, but it was very, very slow. The, the, the compressor's just shot. The mega ohm meter shows uh, bad on the windings, and it's just not pumping well either. I mean, and if it's done destroyed two hard starts and it's on its third one, something's not right. So we're going to get this thing unhooked and uh, replace it. Uh, this is a mobile home, and it's got a Mortex coil. That was uh, that was changed out about a year ago, and it's made uh, for R22 and 410A. So this is an R22 condenser. We're going to put a 410A condenser on. All right, guys, and that quick, the train is gone, and Temp Star is in place. It's dry fitted, ready to braze with a little quick slight bend from the Hillmore bender and uh, no bending necessary on the liquid line just a cut for the dryer and now we are going to uh, hook up nitrogen flow it and start brazing oh yeah and I want to give a shout out to Ralph here on this uh, net braze 15% solder that comes in the roll here I'm trying it out for the first time so Ralph, uh, I will let you know how I like it. I'm fixing to use it. All right guys, we're looking at the Mortex coil. And if you look right here, if the camera will ever focus, and it's autofocus. Okay, right there you can see where it says R22 slash R410A. The coil is not old, but one thing I do see that I don't like, if you look right here, somebody put a tag on here that there's a 96 piston in here. The brazing is all done outside. Tyler's out there hooking up the high voltage and the low voltage. This is just a straight cool condenser. The man didn't want a heat pump because he doesn't really use the heat that much. Um, 96 is too big for a four ton. Uh, I don't see how that other one was really putting out. Uh, that, that That's definitely in the five ton level on a 96. That temp star calls for an 80. So I've got plenty of pistons out in the truck. I'm going to replace this thing with a uh, with an 80 piston. Guys, it's probably hard to see on camera, but that is definitely a 96 piston. That's way too big for a 5 ton. I'm, I'm sorry, for a 4 ton. <clears throat> that piston is made... For a five ton condenser, that's just that's just way too big for a four ton. So I'm gonna go get an 80 out the truck. All right, guys, I got a container here full of pistons that I keep up here in the top of the truck. So we're gonna dig through here and find an 80. I should be able to find one relatively quick because I that's a pretty common size. Oh, that's a 93. Okay, guys, let me dig in here. Alright, guys, we found an 80 piston. It's too hard to show up on camera. You have to take my word for it. So I'm going to bend this back into place. Put this 80 piston in there. Put that Teflon ring back in there, snug it up, and then we can start a vacuum. All right, guys, I've replaced the piston, and I even wrote, I scratched out the 96. I wrote right here, piston size is 80 for R410A. So now we can start a vacuum on the system and start it up. All right, guys, we got nitrogen on the system. I went, I went a little overboard on nitrogen. I wasn't paying attention, but it's holding really well. It's not moving. So we'll let that off and then put it in a vacuum. All right, guys, vacuum is down to 280, 
well 280 and, and dropping so we'll let it sit here and pump until it stops dropping we got a nice tight seal and we'll open the valves and charge it up guys one thing i want to point it out here on my uh, control door you know where the model and serial number is always inside i take a marker and i write the date of installation uh you know that way if there's any confusion with the homeowner or if somebody else buys the house or if there's warranty issues you know i got evidence of when i installed it so i just thought i'd point that out all right guys she's up and running it just started it's been less than probably three minutes and uh so we'll let it run it's running a piston so we'll get a target superheat and uh I didn't take out, I usually do my eye connect on new installs, but this is a trailer house and it's just a condenser swap out, so yeah, I really didn't worry about it. And uh, so I'm, uh, I'm gonna just sit here and monitor it. And then after about 10, 15 minutes, we'll get a target superheat and see where we're supposed to be. All right, guys, we're running, the target superheat was 16, we're running at 17, that's perfect. The head pressure looks good. Suction pressure looks good. I like that. Good thing I went and checked that piston and changed that piston. So guys, if you're ever doing mobile homes or anything, you know, and you're changing just the condensing unit, doing a conversion like I did here, always go check your metering device. Make sure your piston sized right. Because uh, if I'd have left this thing on that 96 piston, it would have been a disaster. But it's all done. Came out looking nice. The electrical here, uh, I. When I, when I came out here the other day, I told him I was going to take it and put a disconnect box on the wall and then put a whip. But he asked me to leave it alone because as you can see, there's a T-junction box there. It's feeding the unit and it's feeding something else. So he asked me if I would please not mess with it and leave it like it is. He would get an electrician out here. I said, no problem. So that's why we hooked it back up like that. The breaker is on the electrical pole right there there's a breaker box down there but it came out nice it's running smooth thanks for watching we'll see you guys on the next one